<laughs> All right. What's up, everyone? <laughs> Daddy Warbucks here. Uh, and today we are continuing our playthrough of the Curse of Strahd. Uh, with us today, we have Gura playing Amafrey. We'll get that one out of the Hi. way first, <laughs> since I always screw it up. <laughs> we have uh, Snow playing Barkley. We have Spoopy to Doopy playing Seelequi. And Hulk Hogan's 24 inch pythons playing Hoppa. Uh, story so far um, Strahd is bad. They trapped them in. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Everyone will be like, what the hell is he on? Um, the, the party was trapped in the demi plane of Barovia by uh, Strahd uh, to be his playthings. And after adventuring through the entire countryside, um, and eventually pissing him off enough that he has decided to kill them. So they took a long and arduous journey to the Amber Temple to find uh, long-forgotten relics that would help them in their fight against Strahd. They recovered a uh, magical weapon made of sunlight, they, and they have found all manner of, uh, of sarcophaguses that hold the long-dead remnants of forgotten gods. And... Through the exploration of the temple, they fought all manner of crazy things, um, and a lot of our, uh, a lot of the people in the party have been acting rather strange. And that's where we are picking up for the day. Uh, the the party, after an encounter with, uh, with with a very strange elf, has acquired passwords to get through most of the traps and doors unharmed? Question mark. Um, and they are going to a room that they believe is the treasure vault of the Amber Temple. Um, and currently, it's just Snull, Hapa, and Gura on the second floor. Because uh, at the end of the last encounter, Spoopy had turned into a bird and flew away. And we know not where she is or what she's doing. <laughs> so, what would everybody like to do? You guys remember the password for this though? Nope. Nope. <laughs> I think uh, Sila has them. Oh. Well. Oh, it looks like we're leaving then. Yeah. I suppose we are. Okay. I have no memory of what the passwords were. I think they, they were with uh, Burton, right? I think I think Burton and um, and Sela have them, so I think we should go try and find Sela. It might be a good idea. Okay, let me uh, take you guys back up to the first floor. All right, uh, you guys can see yourselves now, right? Yep. 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 And what would you like to do? Leave did, the it, did anyone see where she went? I didn't. I thought she left. Like, yeah, let's find her. Um. Do we have a tracker? We're we just gonna blindly search. The entire temple. We're gonna, we're gonna blindly leave. Leave. See if we <laughs> see a bird. Uh, Sila, what are you doing while this is happening? Um. So I think that when she left, she would have tried to make her way back to that um, that stone tower where they slept. Impossible. That was several days' journey away. She would have never made it. So where could she have gone? Right where I've placed you on the map. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically it's just... You um, collapsed in the snow. Because it's it oh, was such okay. extreme temperature. Okay. So, so she's collapsed. Well, I'm afraid I know that you notice a lot of things. Do you see anything out here, or should we just keep going? Well, I don't know if I see Scylla from this dis distance. Uh, Do I? Yeah, you can see her off in the distance. 
I mean, okay. it, it's daylight out, so... I mean, you have vision. You can see what your token sees. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to move near here. It's a trap! It's not really. Trap. So, how is she doing? Uh, she She's Fine. laying yeah. unconscious yeah. in the snow. Unconscious. So... I'm going going to try to wake up here. Hey, Sila, wake up! Did she wake up? Sure. It's just you're so very weak. It's so cold. She just groggily like opens her eyes and tries to peer up, and she just like groans. You idiots! Us? The You're the one lying down here, frozen. <laughs> We're not the ones that went outside. <laughs> okay, I'm going to grab her and try to... Um... Does, does she not have a winter coat? Um, She does. Everybody has one, remember? But when she left, she she was a bird. <laughs> and, and as a bird, she wasn't protected against the elements. So she flew... Until she succumbed to the extreme cold and she collapsed. Does she look okay, or does she just look weak? Uh, like she just looks weak. She doesn't. It doesn't seem like she's been too hurt due to exposure. But you definitely need to get her inside. So let's get her inside. <sighs> okay. Need to grab shall, her. Shall I pick, I'll pick her up and I'll carry her inside. Okay. Do you want me to roll to carry her, or could I just pick her up? Was there a oh, question? I her up. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna hurry things along. She's kind of like out of her mind a little bit with exhaustion, probably, and maybe she groans. My minions. What minions? Uh, and, and she kind of shakes her head. She's like, "What?" What are you talking about, uh, Seal? She tries to stand up because, um, I guess what I was getting to was that her minions are carrying her back into the temple. Oh, <laughs> yeah. She she talks about her minions and she's looking at you. <laughs> uh, I, I understood what you meant. <laughs> the, the one person carrying her, fucking minions. <laughs> <laughs> And I will place her on the floor very carefully. All right, so should we go try the treasure room, Sila? Do you want to do that before we leave? Or would you like to just leave? Um, so the reason why she left was because she was all worn out from the fights that day. I don't think she would try to go there now. So we have so rest first, right? Is she like back in her right mind now? Like, is she is she still kind of out of it? Um, it's tired, yes, but yeah, you now that you are, have been pulled away uh, from the cold and you've had time uh, to rest, um, yes, you're you're starting to regain your senses. Uh, so she. She's regaining her senses and she looks around kind of startled and she's kind of warm again and she looks around and she's like, uh, where's that guy? Where, where's the lich? Aren't they going to attack us now? They don't seem to care. Not yet. <laughs> I've not heard anything. Um, but if, if, you, if you are nervous, we can, we can leave if you want to. We can head to uh, Kreska Link. Is that the town? Yes. I mean, well, we came all this way. It'll take days to get back. Let's just, let's just move forward. You mean to the treasury? 
Yeah. She seems reluctant, but she's like, you know, we came all this way. It'll take days and days of travel to get back to a town. So we might as well just go to the treasury. Well, to be honest, the only reason we came looking for you was because you have the passwords. <laughs> I mean, that was the only reason why they came looking for you. I mean, what? Do you have the passwords? Yes, yeah, she does. She has the note. Yeah, I have the passwords, and she glares at Barkley. Well, let's go then. <laughs> Walking downstairs, placed you all back where you're supposed to be. Shibit, you shrunk. <laughs> there you go. Let me let me reset these. Because you have inspiration, and we don't want you to forget. Who else has one? I think it's Gura. Uh, I, I don't think I have. I'm checking. Uh, nope. Uh, nope. I think Burton was the last one to have it. Out of character. Nope. Uh, well, there are three stars on the map. It's Phoenix. Phoenix was one of them. But he's not here. Heh <laughs> heh. Oh shit. Oh well. <laughs> Sucks to be you, Phoenix. <laughs> I don't know if you guys recall the conversation that was in Discord where you know I revealed that I like to place things inside maps on people's birthday for them to find. Yeah. Yeah, because you were talking about mine. Yeah, and Phoenix's. Remember Phoenix had a vision and a quest? Something to recover oh. from the temple? But he's not here and this will probably be the last day in the temple, so Oh, well, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I was super nice. Now he's not getting it. Yeah, now he's not getting it. <laughs> All right. Anywho, there's a door. <laughs> okay. I, I pull out the note from my pouch and I try to figure out what the phrase is. Okay. Um, after deciphering all the gobbledygook written there uh, for a moment... Uh, you have to let me find the right thing in my notes. Uh, you read you read that the password for this door is Davitan. Okay, she um she moves closer, and um, you know she looks looks at the paper, looks at the door, and then back and forth, and then she finally says it. Daviton! And as soon as the word is said aloud, um, you see the arcane runes that are surrounding the door glow purple briefly, and then disappear. Do you, do you uh, want me to try I to try do an arcana check to see if, if I can tell if it's really safe to go in? Uh, sure. Looking at the door, you see that all of the indication that there was a magical lock or trap has been completely removed. It seems to have worked. Uh, let's go ahead and go in, Hoppa. And I'll push the door open. Okay. Um, <laughs> there, as you open the door, okay, um, two things of note uh, become very apparent. Okay, One is that there are six heaping piles uh, of treasure in this room and you can clearly see them um and, and they they are very large um there there's items and and, and armor and weapons and, and uh and piles and piles of gold um there's also a very large very pissed off amber golem so as soon as the door opens he looks at you and begins to advance And this is why I left. <laughs> I hope you've got some spells. I really don't. Just stand with me. Uh, 
All right. Uh, descending. TJ start. Barkley. I would like to cast Shillelagh. All right. And then I would like to cast haste on Hapa. Hapa, you are hasted. Hapa smash. Hapa right. smash. Sila? Uh, I will try to cast um, the Erupting Earth. Okay. Uh, deck save on the part of the Amber Golem. I guess would help if I had his sheet. Uh, definitely failed. So can you roll the 3d12? It's actually going to be four, but the fourth one was a one. She did it at a higher. Oh, okay. I understand. So, so it's 28 damage. Um, not me. Okay. Wait, there it is. And then it becomes difficult terrain. Yeah. 20 foot cube. Which would be like that big of an area. And I'll put it centered on the on the golem. Like in front of him. Okay, so like that. Okay. Okay. Uh and I'm done. All right. And next is the golem. So it's going to lumber forward very slowly. So that is 10, 20 because of difficult terrain. And then, uh, yeah, it's gonna have to stop. It can't go forward any any further because of uh, he doesn't have enough movement. So then his second act, uh, his action for the turn, he's going to dash, and move one whole space more. He's he's really booking it now. All right, I'm afraid. Come on, Speedy. Well, you know what? It's good because if if she hadn't done that. He would have definitely been able to hit you, Hoppa. <laughs> you say that. So, I'm going to move here, use my crossbow, and then... Okay, uh, the crossbow bolt hits it. Uh, you see it doesn't penetrate its hard exterior. It just kind of tinks and falls off and lays on the ground. Okay, then I'm going to move here and use hide as my bonus action. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, stealth check. Okay, you are hidden. Okay. Which we're going to represent with the brown dot. <laughs> so, so, before I move in, bonus action, shield of faith. Okay, um, as you cat you you perform the uh, verbal and somatic uh, movement and, and incantation, and as you throw your hand in the air, um, expecting to feel that reassuring presence of, of the shield around you, you feel nothing. Sugar. Oh, it's gonna fight us anyway, so I'll run in and I'll. Take my swings, I suppose. Uh, one with advantage, using the inspiration. All right. Um, you're using the sun sword, you say. As you pull the hilt out, expecting to see the radiant blade once again, you see nothing. Someone's broke my magic. 
Oh, it will probably be. <laughs> um, what's going on? Alright, so I'll <laughs> put the hilt back and I'll smack it with the claws. You don't have another That's weapon? I can do. Uh, not without using an action. To... I'll hit it with the claws and then I'll take the dash action, the, um, the hasted action to go into the bag and find the hammer. So I don't have the Warhammer equipped. Okay, sure. Uh, so attack it with the claws. Uh, your claws rake against it uselessly. Ow. And then I'll use my action to go and get the Warhammer out of the bag. Okay. And that's my turn, sadly. Barkley. Hmm. I shall throw a flame at it. Uh, that is a miss. Once I again, here and that's it. You just see it, hit it, and bounce off. <laughs> Sila? Okay, so she's going to try to use her uh, Staff of Frost. Okay. And let me read this. Um, did you, can you, um, it's a new day. You want to roll to recover charges on it? I already did it. Oh, okay, cool. Never mind. Um... Dang it. If I do anything, I'm probably going to hit Hoppa. It'll be fine. <laughs> so, Cone of Cold, uh, the cold comes from me, so then everything in that radius hits. That's hits right, it. which would be, it's what, 45 feet? Okay, so let's try... Yeah. Let's just do what she's been doing. Let's just do ball of ice. That's what she always uses. And let's try to put it like right here to see if it can knock into the golem. And so that's her action. And then for her bonus action, she's going to use her prayer necklace. And she's going to use um, Bless. Bless on done. three creatures. Okay. Uh, and who are you blessing? So that's one of my questions. When I use a prayer beat, is it always the lowest level slot? Um, yeah, the, the prayer bead tells you, uh, what the, what the level is. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's not you casting the spell, it's the item. And so you can't just use a, like, a spell slot of your own. Uh. Okay, so let's do Hapa, I'm afraid, and uh, Barkley. 2d4. Uh, it doesn't say. So then, yes, it, it's the lowest uh, version. Oh, no, you can see Cure Wounds. It says second level. Yeah, and then anything else is just the base level. So you said three. You said Hapa? Yeah, Hapa, I'm afraid, and Barkley. I'm afraid, Barkley. Cool. And then I'm just going to like try to back up, and then I'm done. All right, Victor, uh, first turn in combat, he's going to do the most Victor thing that he always does. He is going to Mage Armor himself, and then he is going to back away from, from the room with the giant scary golem. Yeah, I, I did the ice, well, I'm just not going to put it. Okay. Because he, he took the damage. But you, it's placement is... Uh, I guess I have to, because someone may try to walk through that space. It's like, there, right? 
Uh, I can't see now, but okay. Oh, yeah, you can't see in the room. All right, the golem will take its turn. Standing in front of Hoppa. It is going to just try to pummel you with his giant hands. Uh, 27. Ow. Yep, take that. And then take it again. Oh, shit, you hit me twice. Damn, that's Total of 48. And then I'm afraid. Okay, I'm going to move here and use my rapier. Okay, with advantage because you're hidden. Uh, yes. and... So, nine sneak attack. Sneak attack. And I'm going to use my short sword too. And that's it. Okay. So now you are not hidden. Papa? So we're pulling out the Warhammer. I'm going to take three swings at this big thing. Uh, roll d4. Oh, roll d4. Roll. You're blessed. Oh. So, uh, 15... Not enough. Uh, 27 is a hit for 12. That is a non-magical Warhammer, correct? Yeah. And then uh, on the third attack, roll another d4. Eighteen is a hit for another six. I thought bless only lasted for one turn, um, but that's my go. No, it uh, it lasts. For a minute. And um, that's my turn. Barkley? No time. Another flame. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, as you try to produce the flame in your space, something goes to terribly wrong. The spell explodes, knocking you backwards and prone. I would like to stand up. Okay. I'm fine. Then I'll move here, and then that's it. See you. Okay, she's going to use her Staff of Frost again and do the same thing. Another wall of ice. And then she's done. One D six one four. Oh, damn. Okay. Uh, so another wall of ice in where? On the opposite side, like here? Yeah. Okay. And so he needs to make a deck save. Failed this one. So he's going to take 25 and get pushed out of the square. Um, yeah, that's it. Victor. Taking his turn. Where are you at, Victor? Alright, he's going to move up so he can see the golem. And then Victor is going to throw a uh, firebolt and miss. They suck. Alright, golem taking his turn. Uh, Hoppa is standing right in front of it. He's just going to let out another two attacks. 18 miss, right? Yeah. Yeah. So 23. That's it. Okay. Uh, for another, it looks like 17 bludgeoning. Yeah, that's okay. And then I'm afraid. Okay. I'm going to move here. 
and use my repeater and sneak attack and use my short sword as my bonus action and that's it 2020 10 28 and okay Papa. Is that my first attack? Uh, bless. I gotta remember this thing. Uh, that's still a mistake, I think. Uh, 15, 16 is still a miss. Twenty-one for nine. Uh, yes. I was gonna say something, but you look like you're in the middle of saying something else before no, I say it. I was just just tracking the damage. Uh, what do you want to say? I was gonna say I was going to also try my smite on this one. All right, go right ahead. You channel the holy energy into your weapon, and you try to smite the creature, but nothing happens. No energy comes to your call. Oh, However, someone's, really, someone's the, really broke something. The the blow from your weapon is enough to find to crack the amber of the golem, and it falls to pieces at your feet. And I'm gonna Happer's gonna leave the room. Slightly confused as to what's going on with all this magic, and he's gonna sit down and try and work it out. Something wrong, huh, Bob? I don't know. Something doesn't feel right. Could we tell that he tried to smite and it didn't work? Yes. Yeah, you guys have been uh, adventured with Hoppa for months, right? You, you're well familiar with his fighting style. You've seen him uh, go through the verbal and somatic gestures and nothing occurred. Can you try to use your sword outside of the room? So I'll take out the sun blade and I'll try to activate it now. Nothing. Did you touch one of the sacrifices of her No. Are you sure? No. I'm pretty sure I didn't touch one. He did not. Huh. Well, I'm going to start casting uh, Detect Magic as a ritual. Detect Magic on Hapa? No, in the room. Okay, all right. Um, the... You have to give me a second. There's lots of notes. Um, uh, in all of the piles uh, of treasure within the room, um, there is nothing. However, inside, you notice that next to where the golem was standing, there are two treasure chests, both of which give off auras of several uh, powerful enchantments. Ooh, I'll go over. I just sent the ice wall. Yeah, the blue is the uh, ice wall. Do I have to wait for it to go away? Or uh, Sila can dispel it. She can. I believe it says as a bonus action she can choose to make it go away. I don't have dispel. No, no. Like as part of the spell's uh, text, it says like as a bonus action you can make it go away. Oh, okay. Um, she kind of smirks at Berkeley that he can't do this for himself, and then um, she just raises her hand and dispels it okay okay i'll walk over to this chest and check for traps uh it is not trapped i would like to open it okay i'll try to is it locked nope not locked 
Yeah. Um, inside the chest, there are a loose grouping of several items. Um, you see a uh, a rod, which has a emerald stone in the top, and, and it's got a, a shaft made from some black uh, wood. And there are obsidian bindings connecting the emerald stone to the wood. Uh, you also see a uh, gold medallion. This one um, adorned with a uh, symbol of helm. And there's uh, a couple other things that, that don't really make sense. Um, a, a set of bracers, some boots. Can I tell if Helm is a uh, good god? Uh, you know it is. You hear Hoppa talk about him all the time. Hoppa, come here. Also, Victor, come here. Wait, wait, wait. But while while Barkley is looking in the chest, she kind of crouches down and she touches um, Hoppa and gives him the cure wounds. But then she says, um, perhaps you should pray to a different god. Maybe a god of the Fae. Have you heard of our Lord and Savior Ectiorn? Solo. <laughs> and then she tries to talk about her <laughs> god. <laughs> Hoppa just sort of blanks this, but says thank you as he felt the energy pass through him. Um, and did Barkley say something? Yes, come here, Hoppa. Okay. Yes. And I will give him the medallion. But, oh, ooh, shiny. Do I know what this is? Yeah, it looks like a, a uh, magical oh, amulet yeah, yeah. of Helm. What does it do? You don't know. Nat one for Spoopy coming from Dark Mage Arcanus. <laughs> How you doing, Dark? Is Victor coming? Uh, he's kind of nervously looking about the room. What's what's wrong, Victor? I'll I'll um I'll, I'll look at the um the amulet, but I'll be more interested in what's wrong with Victor because he always looks nervous. But is is he looking extra nervous right now? Um, he's just you know eyeballing all of the all of the wealth in the room, and he's uh. He's just amazed. He's never seen so much gold, and he came from a noble family. We should try to take as much as we can and then get out of here. Somebody want to check the other chest? I think I'm afraid of sitting that way. Yeah. I try to open the chest. Okay. Uh, you open it. It's not... I'm getting rid of this circle. Get out of here. Square. Um, again, more, more random items. A ring... A bag, uh, uh, what appears to be a kind of wand, and a sword. I pick up the sword. Okay. Um, all of these items are obviously um, uh, magical, and this one, um, it's kind of, it's got like a serrated edge, and you can see that there is a. Um, there are little grooves inside of the serrated teeth and, and it runs up the blade into the hilt. It's almost like a channel meant to, uh, like, like that liquid would flow through. This looks cool. <laughs> Sela kicks a big chunk of the amber golem. Hmm. Can she take a piece? Um, yeah. I think you already have a piece. Oh no, you, you used it to make something, didn't you? Uh, I was going to try to. Yeah, you can take more if you'd like. Okay. She tries to take more, and then um, she gets her pack, and then she tries to start scooping up some gold, too. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll tell you about all the gold and treasures here in a, in a minute. 
Um, so, so what would everybody like to do? I would like to give Victor the uh, rod, see if he can identify it. Um, Victor begins the ritual to cast identify, and um, he's looking around the room, and uh, he, he's just amazed you know he's like what is so much um the rod is the first thing he sees he's like this is a rod of the pack keeper it's it's a uh item meant to benefit uh those in service to a, a higher power you mean uh like a warlock uh, like precisely a precisely like a warlock Boo! <laughs> Boo! Pact Keeper Rod. Uh, does does the um the bag that I'm afraid found look familiar? Like the one I have? It or... does. It looks exactly like that bag. But not not slightly different in any way. Ah, uh, it you know it it kind of does. The 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 mouth of the bag seems uh you know slightly like cracked and worn. But other than that, it's it's very similar. I I opened the bag and put my hand inside it. Just for. Is there anything in there? Uh. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, will you do me a favor <laughs> and roll a strength check for me? Well, that's the best kind of check of a bag I've ever seen. Okay, um, as you do, oh boy, all right, this just, this just went way off the rails, um, oh my god, <laughs> holy moly, okay, so as you put your hand into the bag, I'm afraid, um, you feel some, you feel a very sharp pain, and then something starts to tug at you. Okay? Um, okay. You're, you're able to very quickly react. And you um, pull your hand back from out of the bag. However, when you look down, your hand is no longer attached to your arm. It's just a bloody ragged stump. And you take um, 20 um, oh, slashing shit. damage. You're in quite a lot of pain. Can you illustrate that for me? <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, oh no. uh -oh. What have I uh -oh. done? <laughs> Not oh. a good idea. Not a good idea. Uh. <laughs> There's no hand. Help! Someone help me! Barkley looks at Gordon for a second and goes back to the chest. <laughs> 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 All right. Oh. Um. Uh, Sela runs forward at first because she thinks he's going to pull out more treasure, but then when his uh, bloody stump comes out of the bag, she's like, "What?" And she tries to. I mean, she can't do much except use her other cure wounds from the prayer necklace. All right, Victor. <laughs> Victor is going to throw a fire bolt at the bag. He's like, "It's a bag of devouring. Kill it." <laughs> Victor. We could have put Strahd in there. <laughs> well, you can't fit Strahd. I could, I could ash him and fit him in there. <laughs> you watch me try. All right, so he hits the bag, um, and, and you hear a, a, a squealing sound, <laughs> and then the, the bag alights on fire <laughs> and is it destroyed. Reminds of, it reminds me of one of those movies I watched with little half spider things running around. <laughs> Sealer tries to tear, like, some cloth to wrap around his stump. Her stump. That's gonna cause all kind of problems for you, Gura. Yeah. Don't you have a long bow? Yes, I have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. I had. <laughs> had. <laughs> all right. So that's fun. Well, here's a question. Mm -hmm. Does greater restoration restore limbs? Uh, you, you have to look at the spell description. There are spells that will restore limbs, 
I don't know if Greater Restoration is one of them. I don't believe so. Greater Restoration... Uh, no, it does not. Yeah. Damn, I, I even have a spell that can't that can re revive people that can't restore limbs. It's just told me. Damn it. Sila looks at Barkley and she goes, Barkley, can you tell if we have all the magical items? Can I? T uh, all the magical items? Oh. We've only picked up two, right? All three. There's, well, there's there was the, the bag, rod. the amulet, the rod. There are still many yeah. other things in yeah. in the chest. Like, uh, like, just just get everything from the chest, guys. So, Put it in my bag. No! We'll, don't we'll touch we'll... anything! Victor yells out. He's like, the other items could be cursed or dangerous as well. Just just cool cool your horses. Let me let me finish identifying everything first. For fuck's sake. What's wrong with you? <laughs> well, well, Victor, you see that sword he pulled out? It's dark and it has teeth. It looks like it drinks stuff. Well, let me let me identify it then. Uh, and he goes back to channeling uh, the ritual. You guys got to wait another ten minutes. So while he uh, ramps it back up, um, while he he's preparing the ritual, anyone want to do or, or say anything? Yeah, while he's doing that, she's like, "Hoppa, you're big and strong. You should carry all of this gold." And she tries to like start scooping it up and giving it to him. We could, we could just put it in my bag. It holds everything. But Victor said, "Don't touch anything." Don't touch anything. Don't touch up. Victor, <laughs> you, you crazy <laughs> fool! Hurry up! No, he he just interrupted his own ritual to yell at you to not touch anything. So he's gonna have to start all over. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. So uh, well, I, I'm gonna sit back down and start praying to Helm again and seeing if I can reach out and find out why my magic stopped working. Ah, okay. Uh, as you do, a, a voice answers you. And, and um, it's this is not like a, a entity that only you can hear. Like, the voice booms into the chamber. Why are you? have you called to me? It's the faceless god. Uh, wait, what? You don't normally respond, not here. No, I don't. But it's not every day that, that one of my wayward sons calls to me. I'm not wayward. Maybe I am a bit wayward now. Uh, maybe a bit? Recite to me your oath, paladin. Everything is innocent. Continue. But to remember it. It's on your sheet. <laughs> I know we're trying to find it. Nope, not that one. This one. This is why his smite doesn't work. He doesn't remember his own oath. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Tenants of redemption. I, I, I hit so much stuff. The tenants went out the window. <laughs> Recite to me your oath, paladin. I will not ask again. Innocence. All people begin life in an innocent state, and it is their environment or the, or the influence of dark forces that drives them to evil. By setting a proper example and working to heal the wounds of a deeply flawed world, you can set anyone on the righteous path. Peace! Violence is a weapon of last resort. Diplomacy and understanding are the paths to long-lasting peace. Now tell me, my son, how have you demonstrated peace to all the wayward creatures of the ran of the lands of Ravenloft. They're not wayward, they're just pure evil. No, you swore to me under the oath of redemption that you would try to bring these these lost souls back into the light. And peace is supposed to be your main tool to do so. You were supposed to use violence under only the most extreme of circumstances. And I have witnessed you today attack someone who did not wish to fight you. Tell me, how did you begin to fight the Lich Exathanter? Did he attack you? He hurt my friend and he needed to be conquered. 
He you. is nothing but evil. You lie! You lied to yourself and you lied to me. And it is for this reason that I no longer consider you one of my own. You are not a, a paladin of Helm any longer. You have been stripped of your power, of your authority, and my aid will come to you no more. And with that, you see, you can feel the presence fading. Well, that's inconvenient. <laughs> that's inconvenient? <laughs> as as the uh, as the the force begins to disappear, um, there is one last one last message. You must redeem yourself. Find yourself once again worthy of my presence, and I may yet forgive you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> so that was a god. I'm afraid he says. As as this uh this presence disappears, you hear uh whispers coming to you from the cracks above you. Do not listen to him. We have a better, stronger god. We can restore your power to you. Does Sila hear the whispers? Everybody hears the whispers. Oh. <laughs> she turns to Hapa and she says, um, why would you want to follow a god that requires such restraint? We're, we're in so much danger. Strahd and all of his minions and all of his, the people that he has corrupted, they are after us. This is not a time for peace. For the, for the first time, the party's ever seen Hopper in deep contemplation. She wonders if he's having a stroke. <laughs> it it kind of looks the same. The cookies are a lie, Hopper. Don't go to the dark side. <laughs> Emma Free wishes she had her hand back. Sila kind of looks at Amma Francis. Maybe, maybe I can carve something for you. Um, and she's kind of thinking of like Jamie Lannister's hand. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a hook. You could have a hook. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> that would be cool. But I want my head, my hand back. Huh? Uh... Oh, that's right. I can't do my. All right. Is Victor done yet? Uh, no. He was he was in awe of a a god's literal presence. Um, so he kind of. He, he lost concentration again. He's, oh, shit! And then uh, once once uh, Helm disappeared, he starts, oh, okay. Uh, and he re begin ag again casting Identify. All right, anyone else? I'm just waiting. Hoppa, what what are you doing right now? Backs away from the party and asks, "Who is this greater guy?" Oh, um, intrigued. All right. Um, the you the voice that was whispering to you. Um, it was coming from from up here and, and um, you hear it speak again it says come place your hand upon the sarcophagus we will speak more uh, 
All right. Uh, I'm afraid. What are you doing am amid all of this? Just clutching your stump? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, Too much pain. So Victor, Victor finally uh, finishes his ritual. Um. And while everybody's distracted, half of my sneak away. All right. Um, so you see three amber sarcophagi. Sarcophagi. Um, you can look around. Uh, I'm going to wrap up with Victor in this room first, and then we'll check in with you. All right. Um, nobody notices a giant turtle shuffling. Wait, no, not at all. Oh, he's super sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I actually, you know what though? I don't think you could go through there. Like you can see through those holes. <laughs> but those that those passageways <laughs> Yeah, those are only 3 feet wide. There's no way you would fit through with your shell. So you just know that you have to make it into that room wherever it is. Okay. That that's where the creature is calling you from. We'll, we'll keep that 21 for later. Yeah, we're okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so Victor begins to identify. Uh, first, he holds up the wand, and he says, Whoa! Oh, this, this could be handy. And then he goes to shove it, in, shove it into his pocket. Uh, what is it? Uh, but, mm, <clears throat> sorry, say what now? What's the wand? Oh, uh, uh this is nothing. I, I'm just gonna hold You just said it. I've been, like, dismissed from my god. Do you think I'm really gonna hold back if you don't tell me what that wand is? Uh, good point. Uh, this is a wand of secrets. Um, it has, when using it, you can use it to check and see if there's a secret door or a trap. Thank you for being honest. Yes, and now I will continue to put it into my pack. Um, <laughs> then he holds up. I think up, that should go to the rogue. The rogue can do that anyway. <laughs> 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 uh, the next thing he holds up is a small ring. He says, uh, "This is a ring of warmth. Uh, it it'll help keep you keep you warm." In uh, how many charges? It has three charges. Um, it'll help keep you warm in the most extreme of temperatures, and uh, I believe it'll it'll keep you secure against cold damage as well. All right, then he he sets it back inside the box, starts picking up the another thing. He's like, oh, oh these bracers, these are very nice. Uh, these I believe you would like and he holds them out to Amafrey and then he looks at the stump and then he kind of withdraws and he's like oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what do they do? Um, <clears throat> well, these are braces of archery. As long as you wear them, if you have a long or short bow, uh, uh, they make your attack so much more devastating. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid they could. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh. Let's go to Sila. <laughs> uh, the next one he pulls out. He's like, "Oh well, uh, maybe these boots then. Uh, they, those the boots are nice, wouldn't you say?" <laughs> <laughs> these these boots. Um, they they have fur around the uh, around the the lining. Um. And as you wear them, um, they again make you resistant to cold damage. Uh, you ignore difficult terrain by ice or snow, and they make you uh, immune to the effects of extreme temperatures down to negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you're wearing heavy clothes, up to negative 100. Uh, he, he begins rooting through the bags again, though. Um... He pulls out that sword. He's like, oh, this is quite an interesting deal indeed. He he pulls it out and he says, this 
this is a magical weapon. Um, and those those channels, and he's pointing to the grooves. He says that they they fill with the enemy's blood, and they take it into the user. Uh, with this is a sort of life stealing. Uh, on a critical hit, it deals extra necrotic damage, and as long as the target is not a construct or an undead, you gain temporary hit points equal to the damage dealt. And then uh, the Rod of the Pack Keeper. I think I already showed that to you guys. And lastly, uh, the bag. As Victor has already pointed out, it was a bag of devouring. <laughs> what about the medallion? Ah, uh, the medallion. That is a, a special item. Uh, when worn by a paladin, uh, the paladin, during a rest, can uh, expend a spell slot and fill the medallion with holy energy. Uh, the energy then can be used to um, can be used to enhance one of their one of their smites, and it can store. Um, two spell slots worth of damage at a time. And you might be saying, well, that's stupid. Well, if you're going to take a rest and he still has spell slots, he can pump them into, into the medallion since he's recovering them anyway. And then he'll have super duper smites. But it doesn't matter because he can't do anything right now. And then lastly, let's talk about all the treasure in the room. Or we could just, you know, move on. I'm cool with moving on. We could grab some of the gold. Are you sure? You Do you really want to do that? We could buy, I'm afraid, a new hand. We could. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, you have to let me find... This is area X41. <sighs> okay. All right. So which which pile are you guys going to look through first? This one closest to me. All right. In this pile, you find the following. <laughs> All right, uh, for those in chat, it's really small, so I'll read it. You find 7,000 wooden coins painted to appear like gold, uh, and they're worthless. Find 15,000 copper pieces worth of iron pots. An obsidian scepter with a gold filigree, which appears to be very valuable. Uh, it's worth 2,500 gold pieces. 11 rusted helms and 15 thin leather-bound tomes all of them signed copies of a storybook called Snow Dwarf and the Seven Whites. <laughs> Barkley Youngster Tomes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those will come in handy. Yeah. How many coppers are in a gold? A uh, hundred. Oh, okay. No, in a gold? No, no, no. Wait. Uh, is it? Is it ten thousand? No, it's a, it's a hundred to silver, a hundred silver to a gold, so it's a thousand. Okay, I took the next one. I'll give the scepter to Hapa. You can use it to smack things, I guess. Uh, no, it says one, it's a hundred. That doesn't make sense. 
Oh, it's it's ten pieces to silver, ten silver to a gold. Yeah. Okay. So it one hundred copper is a gold. All right. So it's still a lot of a lot of money in uh, copper pots. Yeah. All right. Uh, Hapa. You know, you said you're gonna look at the next one, right? I'm sorry. Number five. Okay. So this huge pile of money, um, you find nine thousand loose silver pieces. Six non-magical crystal balls, approximately worth 20 gold pieces each. A bronze crown with tiny gem-eyed dragons for spires. A life-size wooden pony. Jackpot. Yeah, jackpot. <laughs> uh, and six marble vases worth about 100 gold pieces each and weighing about 100 pounds apiece. Here, actually, let's, um, yeah, we'll, we'll try around with that later. All right. What now? Put those pots into that horse. Yeah. Put what? <laughs> <laughs> Metal pots, you said. You're not making any sense, woman. And you're gonna push it towards the enemy. It's an offering. Guys, what are you doing next? Ignore, ignore her. <laughs> That's, she's getting everybody off task. <laughs> Alright. I'm trying to figure out a way to get down them stairs. Well, I'm gonna go eat cookies. Do I see anything I could use for the reincarnation spell? Reincarnation? Yeah. Um, what is Jesus? Uh, do, 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 touch dead. Do, do, do. Where is it? Oh, rare oils and and unguents. The hell is an unguent? Worth at least a thousand gold pieces. Remember, I I told you guys that when it comes to material components, you could just pay the gold. So I can use iron pots to do the spell. <laughs> sure. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll take the iron pots. Are we taking a long rest? Um, it's gonna take what? Well, yeah, why not? It's gonna take a long time to sort through all this treasure and load it all in, into the bag, right? If you guys intend on taking everything that's not nailed down, <laughs> we're taking everything. Everything, even the worthless wooden coins. No, 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 no. Because. <laughs> Regardless of what Hoppa may have led you to believe, you know the bag of holding does hold a finite amount. <laughs> no, if she knows they're wooden coins, she wouldn't take those. I'm I'm more concerned about the uh, the uh, fifteen iron pots. Man, that would hold. That would take up a lot of space. <laughs> Unless you do the spell now. Well, let's see who's going to reincarnate. Well, he, there's nobody yeah. We could kill him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's like the best <laughs> idea ever. I know how to get you your hand back. It. We just have to kill yeah. him. <laughs> well, I, I prepare to not have an eye hand in mine. <laughs> Remember that wish you did, like having your hand back? Zila. How are you supposed oh. to convince people you're not evil if your first suggestion is we can kill him right now? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't even have the spell prepared, so... Oh, okay. Well, you're taking a long rest. It's gonna take a long time to sort through all this stuff. <laughs> Alright. Uh, next pile? I'm sure. Okay, in this treasure hoard, uh, there's a pile of iron ingots worth about 250 gold pieces total and weighing about 2,500 uh, pounds. Um, 30 holy symbols from various paladins and clerics that have Strahd has killed throughout his time in Barovia. 
Um, a set of 12 copper chalices with silver filigree worth 25 gold pieces each. A gilded skull with red garnets in its eye sockets. And eight war hammers and six war picks. Next. This one um, has 30 50 gold piece worth uh, approximate gemstones, three rusted suits of plate armor, nine rusted shields, and a child sized sarcophagus made of black wood inlaid with gold. Is there anything in it? No, it's empty. It's also the sarcophagus is too large to fit into the bag of holding. Okay, I'll take the gemstones and drop the pans. Uh, well, you couldn't take the pans anyway. Hoppa's got the bag. I was trying. No one said that they were putting it in the bag. They just sat there with the bag looking at stuff. All right, the next pile has 12,000 loose silver pieces again, five rusted suits of ring mail and six rusted breastplates, a silvered rapier with a pink glass hilt, um, four rusted great swords, and a gilded chariot. Isn't that like a horse thing? Yes, yeah, yeah it's, it's the little buggy that a horse would pull. Strahd was clearly a hoarder. All right, and then where is that? And then the last one. Ah, uh, oh, damn it! Is uh six point six k in electrum pieces, all scattered about. Uh, each of the Electrum pieces stamped with a profile visage of, of Strahd. Um, there is 75 empty bottles. A trunk filled with six fine dresses and gowns. Ten pieces of jewelry worth 250 gold pieces each. And 500 gold pieces in a rotted wooden chest. Eight painted ceramic statues of saints worth... 250 gold pieces each and weighing 50 pounds each. Turn Barkley into a horse, load it into the into the chariot, and drag it all the way down the mountain. That will work. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so here is all the stuff. And and just because I know it it's this is a lot of stuff. There's already a lot of stuff. If you look in the character journal, um, I've added a character for Bag of Holding. And just to kind of keep track of what all exactly is in there. That way Hoppa's character sheet isn't 10 miles long. <laughs> so so um, I guess the question is, what all are you putting in the Bag of Holding? Everybody can see and edit the sheet. If you want to take anything from your sheet and add it in there, you're you're welcome to do so. But of everything listed in this in these hordes, what what are you putting in there? The silver and the electrum. The silver and the electrum. So let's um, can we let's because um, there's a lot and I get very confused easily. Let's let's go from 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 top to bottom, right? So the first pile, the um, the fifteen thousand copper. You want the 15,000 copper in iron pots? Well, we're going to dump it out of the pots. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, shit. My, see, I told you I get confused easily. I didn't even, didn't even register. So 15,000 copper. Uh, Not the scepter. And then there was 2,500 gold pieces in the first one. Obsidian... Scepter, and then we're going to put in parentheses its value. Um, why are you keep flipping to the spells in bio? There's nothing there. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Uh, 
15 thin leather. 15. Uh, Snow White and the Seven Whites. We'll put a, yep. co put a oh, copy God. of that in there. Don't want to lose it. All of them. Uh, 9,000 silver pieces. Uh, six non magical crystal balls. Wait, can Sila have one of those? Sure. There's plenty of them. Wait, are we doing the long rest right now? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, what? So now Sila has a witch's hat and a crystal ball. Yes. <laughs> Uh, do, 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 do. Shit. 11, 15. Uh, bronze crown. That won't fit in there. Thirty holy symbols. Are you taking those? Sure. <laughs> uh, what about the twelve copper chalices? Sounds good to me. <laughs> and the gilded skull. Uh, eight war hammers and war picks? Nah. And Snall said he took the gemstones. Uh, that won't fit. 12,000 silver pieces. 17,500 copper? Uh... Would I have been able to cast a spell before we started the rest? If you want. Sure. I don't give a shit. Okay, I want to cast Greater Restoration on Sila. On me? Yes. What does that do? It removes ends, curses. It removes curses and diseases. And so you see that it had zero effect. Okay. Good to know. I'm not cursed. I'm so you say. a cursed thing. So now you can try that a bunch more times as you try it on each thing that I hold. What? What? No, I can't. Uh oh no! I did add the weight, Giz. That's exactly that's exactly why I, I gave it to him. Because if you look. Just the stuff they put in the bag right now weighs 682 pounds. And uh, the bag of holding, like I said, has a very finite amount that it can hold. And the bag of holding will rupture anything above that amount. Do we know what it can hold? Yeah, you identified it. It's in your journal can hold X amount of, it's of uh, cubic feet or 500 pounds and <laughs> just the coins okay just the coins that you have loaded into the bag weigh 680 pounds Berkeley get rid of those books it is two well only one book made it in the bag <laughs> yeah I, I'm sure it weighs like a ton all right we can each put coins in each of our packs oh you'll still get the opportunity <laughs> because uh, you, guys you guys have just been just break my bag. loading <laughs> alright uh, you guys have just been loading everything yeah grab the treasure load it in here grab, grab that too shove it in there and, and uh, after a moment you see you see a tear starting to form in the side of the bag and as uh mending <laughs> mending doesn't do anything it's like the very no. seams in the fabric of reality are ripping apart 
Um, and as the bag ruptures, uh, maybe I could jump in and fix myself. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> as the bag ruptures, there is an explosion. Uh, I need everybody to make a dexterity check to try and move out of the way. Explosion of gold. Uh, you would think. I mean, Sila's got a 20. She gets to add my Sila, uh, no, Sila. Well, okay, two things wrong with that statement. One, Sila has a net one. Uh, oh. two, you don't have an aura. You're not ah. a paladin. <laughs> I'm a total. <laughs> You're a mighty total. <laughs> All right, so I see no past saves. Okay, well, uh, in a huge explosion, uh, uh, what is that roll? 3d20s for 15? All right, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> everybody in the room will take 15 uh, force damage as the bag ruptures and explodes. <laughs> And the majority of the items that were in the bag are scattered in the astral plane. Uh, <laughs> remaining in the room. Um, so, Hoppa, anything that you had placed in the bag previously is gone. I just delete the bag. Okay. Um, but as far as all the treasure in the room... Um, any of the actual items, the copper chalices, garnets, blah, 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 all that stuff is gone. And about, I'll, I'll be nice. I'll, I'll be nice. You lost your bag of holding. That sucks already. It'll say half. Half of the coins that were shoved into the bag are now scattered throughout the room. So we got... 7.5k CP. Uh, 4.5k SP. 250 gold pieces. Let me see if there's anything else I missed. SP. Stuff, 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 stuff. Stuff, 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 stuff. And luckily, the, the gems, because Barkley pocketed those. <laughs> oh, another 12,000 silver pieces. Okay. So that's what's left. So 10 silver pieces is one gold piece? Yeah. It's still a lot of wealth. And if you guys uh, want to split it, do you want to split it evenly or? Sure. Just don't explode. Yeah. All right. So that's 1,875 copper for each. That is. 2,625 silver for each and 63 gold each. At least you didn't put any of the magic items in the bag yet. <laughs> you definitely didn't say that. Oof. This treasure vault has been more dangerous than most of the monsters in this in this temple. Yeah. <laughs> I lost a hand. Hoppa lost his bag. Everything is going down.
So shall we leave now? That's probably a good idea. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. How are we going to get back? Get back where? Like out of the mountains. To Kresk, I guess. The same way we got here. You guys are leaving the temple? Unless someone has a better idea. There is other homes that we can explore. What about the big room at the bottom? Yeah, that is that. Well, let's go yeah. to it then. Okay. So I give my longbow to Sila, seeing like I can't you, use it. You might it. as well just keep carrying it. She doesn't have proficiency with the longbow. Okay. Can I use the bracers until we, until maybe he gets a hand back? Um. They, they require a tube. I know they're made of leather. See the password. Uh, I that, look at the paper. That I brings up a good. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, that brings up a good question. You guys did take a long rest before your bag exploded, and you found a bunch of new magical. Did anybody attune to any of the new things? I can't use any of them. I had the amulet on, but I can't do anything with it. So how many magic items does that give to everybody? I now have uh, my three. I'm afraid wants the ring of warmth. Actually, no, I have my, I have two. I didn't have it. I didn't have the. No, I have two, two. Okay. There's still the, the boots of the Winterlands. I think, does Sila have three? She's got the pearl, the staff. What else? I have the tan bag of tricks, the staff of frost, the prayer necklace. Oh. So she couldn't use the bracers unless she gave up one of her... Well, you don't have to give it up. You just have to unattune from it. Okay. Because you can only attune to the three. And Victor has a wand of secrets. <laughs> so I look at the note and try and figure out uh, the passphrase. Okay. I have to look at my notes to figure out what the passphrase is. Um... Yes, all of these items require attunement. Uh, Giz. Yep, all of them. Uh, 31, is it what I said? Damn it, I forgot already. Okay. Um... As you step forward, where the hell? Okay. Um, as you step forward, looking at your notes, you find that the correct passphrase is Dargol. Uh, she steps forward and says the word, and then tries to do uh, a check to see if she thinks it worked. Uh, same as before, all the runes have disappeared, and it appears that the way is open. Uh, she says, uh, it, it seems to have worked. Why don't you go check it out, Hoppa? Let's go, Hoppa. Peace, Hapa. Okay. Uh, as soon as you open the door, you are overwhelmed 
with the horrid perfume of the ancient dead. Stone niches run along the walls of these catacombs, and they hold human-shaped amber husks, bones, and tattered shrouds. Uh, as you enter, you can see there are tall iron candlesticks standing in alcoves. That's what these little uh, three-pronged thingies here are. Um, the candles ignite as you enter, casting flickering light upon the walls and causing the shattered amber to glisten. Enter. <laughs> Everybody's too scared to enter. All right. Um, you can see again, there are each one of these little niches there. I don't know if you can see, but each one of them is a corpse, you know, laid out to rest encased in amber. I don't like this place. Just checking yes. out things. <laughs> Just checking out. This could be the uh, paladins that Strat killed. How does it make you feel, Harper? As you as you look around, um, with that with that statement, um, looking again closely at the corpses, you can see that all of them are uh, wearing various holy symbols dedicated to to different gods, and you can see that this entire vault is a trophy room. Uh, it, it's Strahd's reminder of how he has triumphed over and over against the various gods and their uh, and their followers that have tried to stop him. I did. Guys, this hall is empty here. I don't know why. How many souls are there? There is nothing here. Oh, look, it's six. Oh, there's more. Well, <laughs> enough for all of us. <laughs> Plenty of room for all of us, right? Uh, Sila, what is that arcana? Oh, that's the old one. Never mind. Sorry, my bad. All right, would anybody like to do something in this room? Vengeance. Vengeance. Uh, Hapa. As, uh, as you stand in this room, and look at the uh, at all of the corpses here. Um, you can't help but be overwhelmed, right? Um, you say that you you swear uh, to get vengeance, and, and as the thought crosses your mind, um, you feel a stirring within you. Um, you hear you hear a voice different from the one before, not malicious or dark, um, but this one very hard, obviously male, uh, and full of rage. Speak to me about your vengeance.
Does everyone hear it? Yes, it booms throughout the chamber. Why are you typing? <laughs> Can't you just talk talk to me? I'm I'm trying to calm kids down. Oh it? okay. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it easier. But um okay, so while the out the way Happer will just be able to come with like this path of vengeance and path of rage towards Strad. And he will say that he wants and he swears he can see that this is just death and that Strad needs to be wiped out in any way by holy light by any means necessary a very odd and specific cho choice of words paladin I am Hor the, the god of vengeance the bringer of destruction upon the the ones that deserve it. I hear you. You said Hall, right? Yeah, H O R E. Tell me, what will you give? To have your vengeance. My devotion. As strong as it was to Helm at the start of my quest as a paladin, <laughs> will become yours. Helm is weak. He sees violence as, as something to be abhorred. But I think you and I can agree that it is necessary. Nay, more than necessary. It is the only course of action. Give in to your rage, and I will show you the ways to, to strike those who have slighted you. Will you swear an oath to me, Paladin? In this dark room I will swear my oath to you. Then in the halls of your fallen brethren I will give to you the tenets of your vengeance. You must always strive to fight the greater evil. When you when you have a choice to strike those uh, but to, when you have a choice to strike a, against a lesser evil or the greater you must always choose to go for the greater challenge. Prove to me that you are worthy of my might. You must also show no mercy for the wretched and the wicked. Destroy them. Never hold back or I will forsake you. And by any means necessary. Hurt, kill, maim. You do what is necessary to fulfill your quest. And if your foes wreak ruin, it is your job to make restitution. If you fail to stop the unjust, then you must make it right. Swear to me that you will do this. I swear to you, Haw. And as you stand here, you feel yourself filled with a burning rage. Um, and, and you feel yourself changing. No longer a pacifist. You are now a paladin of vengeance. <laughs> And uh, the rest of the party, you hear this exchange, and you see Hoppa's face is twisted in rage. See, that just says, finally. <laughs> Can I get a new hand? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm afraid I don't think I can help you. Okay. <laughs> How about try the sword? Uh, 
Stand back. I will pull out the uh, hilt again and see what happens now. Uh, after a moment, the flame sputters back to life. But this time, it seems different. Instead of being a, a beam of radiant energy um, that is golden like the sun, um, it is still radiant energy, but this time it's been tempered with hate. And, and the blade glows red. <laughs> Seems better. Good enough. And I'll exit the room. So, can I investigate this room? Uh, the empty one? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, as you look around, um, you can see that it is empty. There's there's no tricks, no bamboozle. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to leave the room too. Uh huh. So anywhere else anybody wants to go? Yeah, there was that other room on the right. Let's go there. There was? Yes. The one with, with the witches. Show us the way. Uh, and Barkley assumes Hoppa is with them. Yeah, Victor is too. Wait, where did you go? Oh, haha. <laughs> um, Hoppa, do you remember what? Spells. Oh, you know what? I see it. Sanctuary, sleep, calm emotions, and hold person. I think he went to AFK. Yeah, I think so too. Sanctuary is gone. Sleep, calm emotions, hold person is gone. Sorry, I'm trying to get this all swapped over. And now, instead. Oh, you can get a whole person still. Give me one second, guys. Thank you for being patient. Oh, he can okay. learn haste himself at level 9. At level is 9? He, is he level 9? No. Yes, he is. Hop is level yes. 9. Haste, protect from enemy. Here. Let's, let's just add that on there. That's what his new god has given him. All right, there. Bam. Cool. So, I'm afraid would like to open the room, correct? Yes. Okay. Are you sure? Not so. Because, <laughs> I mean, Hoppa's AFK is could be bad. Holy shit. <laughs> yep, told you. All right, um... Go ahead and roll initiative. Let's go ahead and add Hoppa and and Victor. And then we'll go ahead and start the tracker. So let's leave. The flame skulls are first. 
Washing. Ooh, that sounds bad. All right. So opening the door, the door, the flame skulls turn to you, and you see all three of them uh, open their mouths, and you you see a a ball of flame sitting in front of them. All right. Um, and then they, they just stop and stare. Barkley? This is your chance, Sela. Go preach about your gods. I will. Berkeley? Berkeley would like to. Cast confusion. Okay, um, taking a hostile action against the creatures, they're they're going to use the action that they ready. Um, <laughs> so as you begin to say the the verbal uh, and, and uh, components and make the gestures to cast the spell, flame skulls recognizing what you're doing are going to go ahead and unleash. And the flame skulls. I swear to God, I just had their sheet open. Where'd it go? There it is. All right. They are going to use their fire ray. Um, and they each can use it twice. So I'm afraid. Oh, it's whispering. Don't whisper me. Shit. All right. I'm afraid. I'll go ahead and reroll so you can see it. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, the second one hits you for 14 fire. The second one, Barkley, Barkley, take three fire. And then the third one, Barkley and Barkley again, for a total of eight fire. Stupid resistant tiefling. Um, and now, Barkley... You may continue. You cast Confusion. Uh -huh. Spawning the Illusions. Wisdom Save. Alright. So all the Flame Skulls have to make Wisdom Saves. What's your save DC? 16? 16. Okay gonna be that one and then this one I'm afraid okay I'm going to move in and use my rapier and fail horribly Okay. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> you lunge past the enemy and expose yourself to an attack. Um, and if the enemy you were attacking is able to perform and use an attack of opportunity, but... Oh, you're... Did you, you attack this one here in the center? Yeah. Oh, he can use an attack of opportunity. So, and he will. He will use his... Fire ray and hit you for ten. All right. Uh, Let me see. Running away. That's it. See that. Okay. She's just going to use your crossbow, your short bow. All right, Victor. Victor. Um, I 
Victor can never do cool stuff because people run in the comments. <laughs> All right, Victor is going to run into the room. He's going to stop here. Wait, what happened? Inspiration for Gura and a heal for four for Gura. Twitch chat liked the fact that you lost a hand and still were the first to charge into the room. Oh, a heal for 12 on Gura. Which is great because Victor is going to yell at you, Get out of the way! And he is going to unleash a cone of cold uh, to hit all three of the flame skulls. So, Gura, make a uh, con save. Uh, that is a pass. You're going to take 17 damage. And then the flame skulls. Uh, fail, fail, pass. Wait a minute. Lol. Okay. <laughs> Hoppa. Is everything dead or is everything alive still? Everything is still alive. It. I'm gonna come up to this one here. I'm gonna use my new vow of enmity. Okay. Against him, and then I'm gonna swing away, I suppose. All right, uh, that is a hit. So two hits. And your, your vow of enmity, uh, because it's brand new and everybody in chat may not know, can you tell us what it does? It's a bonus action. You alter a vow of enmity, enmity against the creature and you gain an advantage on attack roll against this creature for one minute until it drops to zero hit points or falls unconscious. Okay. So 28, 29 for a total of 27 radiant damage. Anything else? Uh, no, that's my turn. Thank you. All right, the flame skulls will take their turn now, and um, you see them sneer at Victor. Ha <laughs> ha! Foolish human! And they un unleash another barrage of the fire rays, all aimed at him. Sixteen nine. Uh, so first one will hit. Uh, another 20. Confusion. Oh, shit, yeah. Uh, what is it, D10? Uh, I think so, yeah. Uh, I believe 8 is... Melee attack. They don't make melee attacks. It's the fire ray. And randomly determined. That would be Hapagura or the two flame skulls. So... In that order, one, two, three, four. Oh no, Hapagura, Victor, Flame Skulls. So a D six. Hapagura, Victor, Lincoln. Flame Skull hits it is immune, and then the other one, another D eight, D ten, nine, nine is uh, attack against a random. Not the so normal, whatever they okay. do. So then that one hits Victor, and we are exactly where we were before. Oh, what is happening? Uh, heal can't let Stumpy die, and heal Stumpy for 11, 12, 13. Another 13 health for Amafri, because uh, they are really impressed by your tenacity. <laughs> Thank you, Giz. All right, at the end of the turn, I get to roll and try to, to end the confusion, right? Uh, at the end of its turn, succeeds wisdom save. One, two. 
a both pass. And then Barkley, it is your turn again. I shall cast Shillelagh. Yeah, bunk the skulls to death. That'll work. Get in there. Get in there. And bunk. Oh, it did work. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Finished? Yes. I'm afraid. Okay, I'm going to use my rapier. Yeah. yeah that is both a miss. Okay. Uh, you, you have inspiration. And uh, you know what? I should have uh, put this it's up. Okay, there. It's okay. Well, at least now it's you know. Okay. And I'm going to disengage with my with my. Bonus action and move behind you. All right, uh, Sila. She's gonna conjure a, a giant elk, just one, and then tell it to get in there and attack. She's gonna just point straight to the the one that she can see by Barkley. <laughs> And then, uh, and then this. she'll hide with Amma for Angie's done. There we go. Ten foot squares. All right. So you want it to go in and attack the one by Barkley. Yep. And it is going to ram because it definitely charged at least twenty feet. It's a hit for to eleven. Seventeen. Okay. And then that will be its turn. I'm good. Victor. So Victor, um, seeing that he is quite hurt. He's going to misty step out of the room. And then he is going to run over here and he's going to take the dodge action. That old Victor, always looking out for number one. Hoppa. I'm going to hit this one again, I think. With advantage? With advantage. Okay, 19 for seven uh you know these are undead you have to roll the extra damage die oh yeah i i forgot about that so that's uh another 2d8 right uh-huh all right so the first attack then will kill the first of the flame skulls Okay, right, so then I'll move. I'll move here, and then I'll stay. Because that'll be like a the second attack will be a missed attack, and that'll be my turn. Okay. Uh, flame skull here. It. It is going to magic missile at Barkley. At level three, Barkley, take twenty-four damage. Ow! The second flame skull is going to. Huh. He is going to open his mouth and let out a fireball in the center of the room here. So, well, it wouldn't hit anybody out here. Because you're literally behind the wall. So, uh, Barkley, the Elk, and Hoppa all need to make deck saves. 
and everybody passed. So Barkley is going to take eight. Hoppa is going to take 16, and so will the Elk. All right, Barkley, your turn. I'll cast Cure Wounds on myself. Or try to. No, you won't. <laughs> there you go. And then? And I'm done. I'm afraid. Okay, I'm going to to hide with my bonus action. Uh, so do I make a stealth check? Yep, stealth contested by their passive wisdom. Okay. They definitely <laughs> they <laughs> they are aware of your presence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even though they can't see you. Uh when you try to hide, you like shout out, guys, I'm gonna hide over here. And they're like, <laughs> Oh, there he, he's right there. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move here, see. And move here. And, uh, <laughs> let's move here and use my rapier. Uh, that's a hit for 24. That's a massive attack. And that would be it. All right, Sila. Okay, Sila is gonna peek around and tell the elk uh, keep attacking, and then she's going to cast healing word on I'm afraid. And then she'll scoot back, and I'm done. All right, Victor here. Um, he's gonna. He's, he's just gonna continue. Like he, with Sila standing in front of him, he's kind of like grabbing at your shoulders. He's like, "Help me, please, woman! Why won't you help me?" Uh, Hapa. Uh, Victor, shut up and fight. It sounded like a very angry Hapa. He was. Uh, that first attack is going to kill the uh, next of the flame skulls. And then I'll move around and then I'll hit the other one. Uh, 28 for 14. 21. And that's my turn. All right. The last of the flame skulls. Uh, this time. This flame skull is going to. Uh, he's just going to let out another burst of fire rays. Um, this time he's going to throw one at Amafrey. And miss. And one at Barkley. Take four. And then Barkley. Bunk. No. <laughs> hmm. It kind of is a weapon fumble. Um, you lunge past the enemy, exposing yourself to attack. Uh, the enemy is anticipating you to try and strike. They move out of the way and counterattack with an attack of opportunity. And so, fire re again, it misses. Oh, we did miss the elk's turn. Good call. Good call. Uh, the elk is going to hit him with his hooves. Oh, he does hit him. Oh, and it's dead. Victory! So, standing here, uh, looking around him, you see that is another unremarkable room. Except for the fact that in this room, 
Uh, the floor is made of marble, but it is, uh, it's very peculiar. Um, the elk is going to leave the room. He, he doesn't like this room. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very peculiar in that the marble is, uh, different shades of red, but it's like black and darker black. And, and it almost looks like congealed blood. And as you are standing here. Um, Gura, you can hear a whispering voice. I can restore you. Make you whole again. I accept it. <laughs> I accept it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't... I want my hand back. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what is this? <laughs> he didn't even hear the terms of the agreement. Um, it's okay. <laughs> it, it, it calls you again. Place your hand upon the coffin. I I put my stuff on the sarcophagus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I can I push him off before he even tries to do it while he's reading to it? Uh, you can try. I'm afraid. Make make a deck save. See if if uh, you avoid Hoppa's attempt to grab you and. Uh, it's not a contested check, Hoppa. He just makes oh, okay. a save to try and dodge out of the way. In 16, uh, being the crafty crafty rogue he is, he ducks under your hand and grabs onto the sarcophagus. And you see his body wrench in pain as uh, he becomes uh, in locked in with, with the creature inside. Uh, a familiar sight for the rest of the party his, his body seizes up his eyes rolls in the back of his head um, but Gura you experience floating through a void and there's no discussion no discourse Have you have already accepted the being into your body um, you know that the creature's name is Yogg the Invincible and um, after a moment you see his grip let loose from the sarcophagus and as it raises as he raises his bloody and mangled stump up to in front of him you can see something something is crawling out of the end of it it almost looks like tar um and it drips and, and congeals at the end of his arm uh and after a moment it begins to reshape and forms a hand. Uh, the hand is completely black, almost obsidian, but you can move it and control it. Um, you, when you place your hand upon the the cold stone of the wall, you can feel it, so it functions as a hand for all intents and purposes. Um, and, and quite frankly, how would you feel about your new oily black hand? I feel awesome. <laughs> awesome. Overjoyed. That is wonderful. Uh, rest of the party, after after you see him grow this evil black hand, you can see that um, black tendrils are starting to go from the hand up his arm into the rest of his body. You can almost see it's... it's uh, Okay, let me maybe tendrils was the wrong word. It's not like a an object on top of his skin. It's almost like you can see the the uh, all the veins and, and the, the the arteries in his body are being filled with this black substance, and you can see them crisscrossing up his arms. All right, nobody cares. Uh, no response. So <laughs> so as this substance um, continues to to make its way throughout your body, uh, I'm afraid. Um, eventually, okay. you are completely covered in in uh, <laughs> in this substance. And after a moment, you double over in intense agony. It feels like something is pushing its way out through your skin. Uh... Take 35 uh, piercing damage. Yep. 
<laughs> That's about what I expected. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, you're going to use your orcish... Uh... Yeah. Okay, so so you survive at one hit point, and when you look at your body, you can see that these, these uh, oily quills, okay, have penetrated almost every, every um, pore of your body. And your entire frame now is covered in, in these very coarse, uh, very, very hard black hairs. And for everybody looking at Gura, she is quite a monstrous sight now. Because uh, she's, you know, she's already a half-orc. She's got green skin, protruding jaw, you know, fangs. And now she's got these, these, these sharp quills covering the entirety of her frame. Like a porcupine? Almost like a porcupine, yes. Ew. All right. Uh, Gura, <laughs> you, you, as you already stated, you feel amazing. Like, like, you feel better than before. Um, you know, the effects of, of Yogg the Invincible, in addition to gaining a new hand, your hit point maximum is going to increase by 30. Uh, however, because of your ghastly demonic appearance um okay. anybody that that looks upon you other than the party because the party already knows you and accepts you is going to react with immediate horror disgust revulsion and hatred so you have fun with that well we will add that okay. into your sheet later because <laughs> you look like a monster Maybe I am a monster now. When we go to the town. <laughs> Aww. But you have both hands. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, line up. Let's do healing spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I see how no one is doing the thing you've told them to. <laughs> Victor? She's trying to help you now. Oh, yes, please. Thank you. Okay, so 30 feet times 7? No. Yes. So that would be 30... D6 times 7. So, no, wait, what? Hasn't that been errated yet? Uh, yes, but I wasn't going to change it mid, -com mid you know, campaign. I was just going to have it take effect in the, in the at the start of the next game. Because it wouldn't be, you know, like it's, it's functioned one way the entire game and then to change it, it's kind of... But yeah, the, the, the new errata suggested by Mike Merles was that uh, it it only functions once per minute outside of combat. So then it, so, it, it well, but like I said, it's not 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 relevant right now. So twenty nine on Victor, twenty two on Berkeley, uh, twenty four on Hapa if he even needs it. 27 on I'm afraid and then for the elk is that too much dice it's oh times seven right one two three four five six hey, you still even have more healing if you wanted it Okay, and then the last one is on me. Ooh, uh, okay. 
So what now? Should we start traveling back? Are there more rooms? Do you really want to see more rooms? I like rooms. They've been so nice to us so far. Think of all the experience! Yeah, the experience. <laughs> Well, there is one place we didn't check yet. So if you guys want, we can check that. We'll get experience on the trek back. Yeah. So where are we going? Can I ride the elk? Uh, sure. I'm afraid. Did you take your twenty nine? Yes, he was okay. at one. Oh. Yeah, so he's at thirty now. Can I move the elk? Why are you guys talking in chat? <laughs> Isn't it much simpler just to talk in, in voice? <laughs> Where's the last room? Uh, you guys could see it, but you you aren't quite sure. You can see stairs that, that lead... Here, I'm just going to move you so you can see. It's that room. The room that you could see from here, but you... Oh don't know how to exit. Like, you can see the stairs. Alright, well, I'm making a decision for you. Um, you guys are gonna choose to leave the temple, having been thoroughly, um, ha having went through everything and, and checked, and, and um, you're quite content with getting the hell out of here. And so you guys uh, are going to exit. You may camp for the night. And um, as because of the extreme cold, um, it was only... I'm afraid has the ring of warmth. So you are excluded from yes. making any checks for the extreme cold. Um, everybody else, though, needs to make a constitution save. If it's a long rest, can I... Do a greater restoration on the uh, Staff of Frost. A greater restoration? Yeah, to uncurse it. What? Oh, never mind then. I mean, how would you know that it was cursed? You told him. You just told me. Well, when did I do that? Earlier, you said, I have a cursed item. <laughs> okay. I mean, I can not do it if you want. Okay, uh, well, Sela failed, so you have one level of exhaustion. Uh, here, let's go back outside. Alright, so this is where... Uh, Barkley failed. Everybody is just Seelan Barkley. Seelan Barkley have one level of exhaustion. Uh, making camp for the night, so it's a long rest. That is the wrong thing. Uh, Barkley, last last chance. Did you want to uh, do the, the remove curse or not? I guess not. Okay. And I think just because we are down two people today, 
Um, I don't want to get too far ahead since they were absent. I, I told you guys we might end up wrapping up early tonight. Um, so I think that's going to be it. Um, okay. Thanks, everybody, for coming and hanging out. Hopefully you, hopefully you had as much fun as we did. If you enjoyed the stream, check out all the panels below. There's a link to a schedule that shows you all the days that we play. There's a link to our Discord uh, where we chat about D&D and other things all throughout the week. Um, also, if you're interested in learning to play or playing with us, uh, best, best case is contacting us through the Discord. Um, also, there's links to Twitter and Facebook. Follow me on one of those so you can get notifications about stream events, giveaways, and charity things that we do throughout the year. Uh, I'm Daddy Warbucks, and I will see you guys uh, next time. Don't know when I'll be back. Bye!